Let's be honest, diamonds are a scam. A shiny, sparkly, beautifully cut scam. We're talking about a rock made entirely of carbon that somehow costs more than your car, or your student loan, or both combined. But wait, carbon. As in the same stuff in pencil lead. The stuff that comes out of your grill after a barbecue. The same basic element in charcoal. Yes, that carbon. So, how did we get from BBQ briquettes to Beyonce's engagement ring? This question isn't just about geology. It's about marketing chemistry, psychology, history, and yes, some serious emotional manipulation. Because diamonds aren't just expensive. They're designed to be expensive. So buckle up. We're about to dig deep into the earth, deeper into human behavior, and possibly the deepest into your wallet. All right, let's start with the science. Diamonds are just carbon atoms arranged in a very specific pattern, a crystal lattice where each atom is bonded tightly to four others. That's it. That's the whole secret. Same element as graphite, same element as the soot in a chimney. The only difference is the structure. Graphite is soft and slippery. Diamonds are hard and sparkly. Welcome to the weird world of allotropes when the same element can take on wildly different forms. But here's the thing. Diamonds aren't rare. Not really. They're just controlled. More on that in a minute. Geologically speaking, diamonds form deep under ground about 100 miles below the Earth's surface under extreme heat and pressure. We're talking 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures 50,000 times higher than the atmosphere. Over millions or even billions of years, carbon atoms get squeezed into the hardest material known to nature. Then they get blasted toward the surface by volcanic eruptions through rare rock formations called kimberlite pipes. So yes, the process is dramatic, painfully slow, but the end result, a rock a transparent, crystalline rock. One that, chemically speaking, is identical to carbon you could dig out of your backyard bonfire. It just happens to be prettier and much, much more expensive. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so it takes a long time to form. That must explain the cost, right? Not quite. Let's bring in the villains of our story. Back in the late 1800s, diamonds were discovered in South Africa and suddenly surprised they weren't that rare anymore. In fact, they were showing up in large quantities. Big, beautiful, high-quality diamonds were being pulled out of the ground at an alarming rate. Enter Cecil Rhodes and the De Beers Company. De Beers didn't just mine diamonds, they monopolized them. They bought out mines hoarded supply and then did something genius slash evil. They restricted the flow of diamonds into the market. Imagine finding a way to bottle air, then selling it at designer prices. That's basically what they did. They created artificial scarcity. Controlled supply meant they could keep prices high, and most people didn't know any better. But De Beers didn't stop there. Oh no, they went one step further. They manufactured demand. How? With the most successful advertising campaign in history. You know the phrase A Diamond is forever. That was D. Beers, 1947, a four-word slogan that rewired the global brain. Before that, people didn't propose with diamonds. They used all kinds of rings, ruby, sapphire, plain old gold bands. But after the De Beers campaign, suddenly every engagement was supposed to come with a diamond. Anything less meant you didn't truly love someone. Guilt, prestige, peer pressure. It was all rolled into one glittering rock. And just like that, diamonds went from sparkly mineral to emotional necessity. Here's where things get wild. After decades of brilliant marketing, people didn't just want diamonds, they felt like they needed them. And De Beers was happy to oblige, for a price. But remember, they still had massive stockpiles of diamonds hidden away. The rarity was entirely made up. It's like if a company had a warehouse full of pizza, but only sold one slice a day and called it gourmet. This is the moment where diamonds stopped being geology and became pure psychology. When someone proposes with a diamond ring, what they're really saying is, I love you so much, I went into debt for a rock. And society collectively nods and goes, oh, why? Because we've been conditioned to see diamonds as proof of devotion a visual receipt for your emotional commitment. But here's the kicker. That diamond, it's worth half the moment you walk out of the store. Try selling a used engagement ring. Jewelers will look at you like you're offering up a chewed piece of gum. The resale value drops faster than your heart rate after getting ghosted. Meanwhile, lab-grown diamonds, chemically identical, flawless, and way cheaper, are flooding the market. But people still hesitate. Why? Because deep down, we're still chasing the idea of a diamond. The myth, the legacy, the fantasy we were sold. So now you've got carbon made in a lab. Carbon pulled from the the earth and carbon in your pencil, and somehow one of them still gets its own armed security guard and tiny spotlight in a jewelry case. Because price isn't about materials, it's about meaning. Let's talk symbolism. Diamonds aren't just expensive because they're shiny. They're expensive because they've been embedded into our culture, our rituals, and our identities. Weddings, anniversaries, graduation gifts, birthdays ending in zero. Somehow a clear chunk of pressurized carbon became the universal symbol for I care deeply. Please don't leave me. It's not just a gift, it's a social performance. You're not just giving someone a ring. 
You're declaring your value, your seriousness, your ability to play the game, and that pressure. It's not geological anymore, it's emotional. We've attached so much meaning to this rock that not buying one feels like failure, like cutting corners on love. Imagine showing up to a proposal with a synthetic sapphire. Your friends wouldn't say congrats, they'd say, is she okay? But here's where it gets fascinating, the spell is starting to break. Gen Z and millennials, shout out to the economically bruised generations, are beginning to question the diamond dogma. They're asking, wait, why am I expected to spend three months' salary on something that depreciates faster than a car? And that's not a rhetorical question. That three months' salary rule, also made up by De Beers. In the 1980s, they just invented a number and convinced everyone it was tradition. So now people are pushing back, embracing colored gemstones, lab diamonds, family heirlooms, even gas rings without stones at all. Not because they're cheap, but because they're free from the narrative, from the illusion that love can be measured in carrots. That's the real revolution, and it's quietly shaking a multi-billion dollar industry to its core. Let's rewind even further. Long before De Beers or marketing campaigns or Instagram proposals, humans were already obsessed with shiny things. Ancient cultures from India to Egypt to Mesopotamia valued gems for spiritual, religious, and status-based reasons. Diamonds were seen as talismans. They were thought to hold supernatural powers, even offer protection in battle. In some parts of medieval Europe, diamonds were ground into powder and eaten as medicine. Spoiler, it didn't work. Also, don't try that. The point is our fascination with beauty, especially rare, shiny beauty, is deeply human. We're visual creatures. We're drawn to things that sparkle, firelight on polished stone that hits the dopamine button hard, and diamonds. They sparkle like nothing else. Thanks to their incredible refractive index and dispersion rate, diamonds don't just reflect light, they bend it, break it, and throw it back at you in tiny rainbows. That sparkle isn't just aesthetic, it's physics flexing its muscles. So yes, there's real science behind why diamonds look so mesmerizing. But again, mesmerizing doesn't have to mean expensive. You can get the same optical thrill from moissanite, or zircon, or even a really well-cut piece of glass. But we're taught that only diamonds count. Why? Because someone somewhere decided that meaning had to cost money. It doesn't. And maybe the most rebellious thing you can do is believe that. Let's shift gears one more time. There's a deeper question beneath all of this. What makes anything valuable? Think about it. Gold is just a metal. Paper money is just fiber and ink. A Picasso is just paint on canvas. Yet we treat these things like they're sacred because we've agreed they are. Value at its core is a social contract, a collective hallucination. Huh? What? We assign meaning to objects, then build rituals, markets, and entire economies around them. Diamonds are no different. They're valuable because we say so, because our parents said so, because magazines, influencers, and TV shows said so, because James Bond orders his martinis shaken, not stirred, while buying a diamond necklace for a woman he met five minutes ago. But here's the hopeful part. If we created this value, we can recreate it. We can decide that love doesn't need proof, that commitment doesn't need a receipt, that beauty doesn't need to be expensive to matter, and slowly that's already happening. Couples are crafting their own traditions. Rings made of wood, tattoos instead of jewelry, proposals with jokes instead of debt. It's not about rejecting diamonds entirely, it's about reclaiming the story. Because when we stop letting price tags define meaning, we open up space for something better, authenticity. And honestly, that's way more rare than any gem on earth. And let's not forget the diamond's greatest strength. Its symbolism is also its greatest weakness. Because when an entire industry relies on emotion over substance, it's fragile, vulnerable to cultural shifts, economic changes, and TikTok videos with millions millions of views asking, wait, are we really still doing this? Every generation redefines value. What our grandparents saw as a once-in-a-lifetime purchase, many today see as outdated tradition. More and more people are prioritizing shared experiences over shiny objects, travel, therapy, a down payment on a house, anything more lasting than a stone you're afraid to lose. And here's a twist while natural diamonds are praised for being authentic. Lab-grown diamonds are actually more ethical. No mining, no displacement, no warlords. So what happens next? Maybe diamonds will keep their grip for a while while longer. Maybe they'll fade into nostalgia. Either way, the question remains if diamonds are just carbon and carbon is everywhere, then what exactly are we paying for spoiler alert? It was never the rock. It was the story we wrapped around it. And now maybe it's time to write a new one.